بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا محمد. We know the world is getting into a situation of war. There, there has been a lot of unrest and chaos everywhere, uh, especially in the Middle East. But with the developing situation of what's happening in uh, Ukraine and uh, uh, what's the strategy of Russia, uh, the whole world seem to be, seems to be concerned about uh, what's happening and what will happen in the future. We have been receiving a lot of questions about, uh, about this situation and uh, people wanted us to comment if it is the start of World War III and what should be the strategy of the Muslims moving forward. Uh, I really try not to comment on a situation uh, too early on uh, because uh, unless, it is, uh, unless the whole picture is clear and uh, all of the situation is, uh, like, uh, uh, is very clear and I haven't done my own study and research of the whole situation, I try not to comment uh, just to make sure um, I'm not commenting something that's uh, too early. Now that uh, uh, we know Russia's strategy and the war uh, that's properly happening in uh, Ukraine and what's Ukraine doing, what's the uh, response of NATO and uh, what's happening um, with the Muslim world uh, in, uh, in context of this, uh, uh, this war, uh, I think now it's uh, mature enough so we can talk. I'm not a geopolitical analyst, uh, I'm neither a war analyst and I don't like to pretend myself as one and uh, unlike uh, the popular analysts, uh, I, it's, it's not my habit of uh, pretending to be an expert on everything. So I would avoid uh, talking about the geopolitical scenario and the war, the, the political aspects of war uh, between Russia and NATO, which is the popular interest right now. I would rather try to keep my focus of the current war in context of Islamic eschatology and in context of the teachings of Quran and Sunnah and try to explain um, my point of view about uh, what should be the strategy of the Muslim Ummah uh, in context of the, uh, this, this developing situation that might lead to World War III. Uh, in Surah Al-Ma'idah, that's the fifth Surah of Quran, uh, Ayah number 82, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم لَتَجِدَنَّ أَشَدَّ النَّاسِ عَدَاوَةً لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا الْيَهُودَ وَالَّذِينَ أَشْرَكُوا وَلَتَجِدَنَّ أَقْرَبَهُمْ مَوَدَّةً لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا الَّذِينَ قَالُوا إِنَّا نَصَارَى ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّ مِنْهُمْ قِسِّيسِينَ وَرُهْبَانًا وَأَنَّهُمْ لَا يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ this is the ayah that the Muslim Ummah is being fed with and this is the ayah that a specific kind of Islamic scholars and so-called geopolitical uh, commentators um, are using to try to put the Muslim Ummah in the Russian camp and that's this person without taking any names who comes all the way from from southern America to Pakistan and tells that he will settle in Pakistan and spend the rest of his life in Pakistan and tries to teach people in Pakistan and try to influence them using this specific ayah. And these specific kind of people have been using this, this ayah of Quran out of context and have been explaining the meaning of this ayah according to their own desires. Before we come to the specific scenario I'm talking about, let's try to understand the geopolitical uh, situation of the uh, current stakeholders in the war. In the recent past, USSR, not too long ago, in the late 90s, USSR uh, dismantled and it became the Russia that we know today. So in the last three decades, Russia has been a silent player, a silent observer of the world situation. And after the defeat of USSR, after the dismantling of USSR and it being bro broken into pieces and, um, and, and Russia being left over there as relatively less of a power, United States became the de facto international uh, power, the so-called uh, superpower in the world. So United States of America in the last three decades made its, its influence in the world, it established itself in the world as a bloodthirsty hyena. The superpower that was left behind after the dismantling of USSR, it decided to invade the Muslim countries. They started this like uh, about a hundred years ago, but they, they made 
these activities even faster. After the 9-11 event, they came in waiting in Afghanistan, they didn't leave Iraq, they didn't leave, leave Libya, and we know uh, what they are doing in Syria and other parts of the world. So in these three decades, it was established that United States is not a friend of the Muslim world. So all of the Muslims of the Middle East, apart from the few countries that are uh, still left, it was mainly known to the Muslims that United States of America is not a friendly country uh, for the Muslims. So American interests in Middle East, like they fulfilled their interest in the Middle East in a way that totally went uh, according uh, against the interests of the Muslims. At the same time, Russia kept on collecting its uh, Russia, uh, its, its uh, military power, uh, its wealth, and kept on exporting its fossil fuels, gasoline, and uh, others uh, to the West. So in in the last three dec decades, it so happened that Russia that was left after the USSR as we know USSR is a was a communist country and the basic theme of communism was uh, Nauzubilla to they wanted the religion out of this world they wanted Nauzubilla as they say they they didn't want the god in control of the world Nauzubilla min dalik so they were anti religion force they were established as something totally anti religion but after the defeat of USSR the Russia that was left over it started establishing itself as a Christian country and they started building churches and they started um, promoting pro-Christian activities and United States although a Christian country uh, established itself as a liberal uh, secular country so what happened in these three decades was that USSR didn't bother uh, its neighbors like Kyrgyzstan, Kazakhstan, like other states that were uh, separated from USSR. Uh, Russia didn't bother them much. And a very important thing happened at one of the states still a part of uh, Russia. We, we grew up making duas in our masjids, in our places, uh, in our gatherings for, uh, for the Chechen movement that was against the Russian uh, atrocities uh, against the Russian invasion of uh, uh, Russian hold of um, that part, uh, Russian hold of Chechnya. So we, we grew up and the Muslims all over the world grew up making prayers, making duas for the Chechen, Chech, Chechen fighters. But Vladimir Mir Putin was able to make a pact with one of the fighters that was Ahmad Kadyrov. Ahmad Kadyrov in like uh, his like as a part of his deal with uh, Vladimir Putin, uh, was able to repel all other fighters, uh, all other legit fighters that were fighting for the independence of uh, Chechnya. So Ahmad Kadyrov uh, made a pact with uh, Putin and became like practically became a proxy of Russia in Chechnya and practically uh, oppressing, practically finishing and, and uh, repelling all the, the fighter movements, all of the uh, independence movement, military uh, independence movements that were happening uh, in, in Chechnya. Ahmad Kadyrov was then killed in a blast or in an, in an attack and Ramzan Kadyrov, uh, the son of Ahmad Kadyrov was called over by Putin and then Ramzan Kadyrov was made in, in, in charge of Chechnya and Putin started funding about 80% of their annual budget, an annual budget. Chechnya popped up as part of the Russian strategy as the poster child of Russia's relationship with the Muslims. 